Wait, hold on. Hello boys and girls, I'm Flying Teacup and this is kind of a follow-up theory that I made almost a year ago. I speculated who Morris owner was but didn't really come to a conclusion. Or, well I sort of did. If you want to get a better understanding of what the theory is about, I recommend you watch the first video before watching this one. But if you don't want to or already seen it, here's a quick recap. The last order Marvin got before he and his owner was separated was that his owner ran out of moonshine and that he'd go and get some more. While he was gone, Marvin would take care of a group or groups and show them where to go. Who these people are or where they were going is yet to be confirmed. Marvin's owner did not come back and no one knows why. Marvin is now searching for him out on the frontier. I speculated on Rizvan's Twitter where they roleplayed as Marvin for a day and left some clues to who his owner is and where he's gone. The clues we got was that Marvin's owner is a man, he's 5'8 and is allied with the militia. I considered Barker to be his owner at first, but after further research I came across some points that brought Cooper to be considered. I didn't think much about it then, but later realized that I missed a huge quite obvious point that you guys just blew my mind with. The multiplayer takes place a few years after the single player and not directly after. Where's my evidence for this? Well, first of all, in the chapter Blood and Rust, when you unite yourself with the Grunts to fight the Stalkers, they state that the Stalkers are new INC technology, and they seem very inexperienced fighting them. But then in the multiplayer, they're everywhere, both for the militia and INC. The same goes for Reapers. Ash states that the facility where you fight are in is a combat testing facility where they capture animals and hostiles to run deadly tests on them. But one of the most solid proofs that the multiplayer takes place a few years later is the Monarch chassis. When the Monarch was released, Respawn wrote a little bio blog about her construction and where the chassis came from. In the post, Respawn said this. Monarch's design is based on the salvaged, badly burned remains of two Vanguard-class Titans recovered by the IMC from the Battle of Titan. Re-engineering one of the most complex Titan chests of two destroyed ones does not take a few weeks or so. Also, further on, the post states that the AI in the Monarch is a homebrewed version of what could be salvaged from the Vanguards and a new self-made AI from Vincent Dynamics. With this in mind, there is no surprise that the multiplayer takes place a few years after the Battle on Python. So, what does this mean for Marvin? Well, first off, that removes one of the concerns about Cooper not being Marvin's owner. In the end of the campaign, Cooper receives both his pilot certification as well as being inducted into the Marauder Corps SRS, which means that he's one of the most high-ranking pilots in the militia. But if the proof I showed you a year ago didn't convince you, I got some new fuel to feed the fire. In one of the tweets, Marvin asked if anyone knows an establishment that sells moonshine, which makes a lot of people think that Barker is involved because he drinks a lot of moonshine, or is at least one of the characters to drink consistently on camera. But there's something that isn't that prominent about Barker. He doesn't just drink, he owns a moonshine brewing company called Barker's Brewing Co, where he and other colonists make their own homebrewed moonshine. How does this change the possibility that Barker is his owner? Well, if Marvin's owner truly is Barker, then why would he need to make a silent escape and tell Marvin to be quiet about it? Everyone knows that Barker is an alcoholic and that he owns a moonshine company. It doesn't sound that weird for him to go out and get a drink. But the strangest thing is that one of the tweets even asks if anyone knows an establishment that sells moonshine. If this Marvin is Barker, so why does he ask where he can buy moonshine? Wouldn't it be obvious that Barker would go to his own establishment to get a refill? In the Aces intro, he has a flask with him all the time. It doesn't look like he would run out of moonshine anytime soon. He even invites pilots in the Aces to join him at the bar after a victorious battle. And that brings me to another point. If he's back in the militia, it wouldn't take long for Marvin to track him down and reunite with him. Why would he need to start a separate faction to find him? If Marvin has the power and will to do that, then he certainly has the power to find him through the militia. So why is Cooper a much more compelling character to be Marvin's owner? Let's start with some tweets once again. As I said in a theory a year ago, there was a tweet that pretty much confirmed the height of his owner being 5'8". The only character we have confirmed data of being 5'8 is Cooper, as we can see in the wanted billboards in Angel City. Here we can also find a billboard of Sarah, Barker and James McAllen. Sarah is 5'6", Barker is 6'3", and McAllen being 6'2". Close, but doesn't really hit the mark. Now let's head over to Marvin himself. What are the typical traits we remember from him? He's loyal, he's motivated, he gives high fives and thumbs up. Who else is commonly known for doing these things? Barker is commonly known for being distrusting of people and also sometimes easily irritated. Cooper on the other hand seems more laid back and doesn't step down when in danger of his own life as we can see in the interrogation scene with Blisk. Listen hero, you have what's mine and I want it back. Go on, tell your titan to open up. About what? His feelings? 
But one of the classic and cute scenes with Cooper and BT is in the end of the chapter The Beacon, when BT learns to do the thumbs up, which later becomes a gimmick between them. Hmm, alright, there we have another lead to Cooper being Marvin's owner. But only because Cooper does it with BT doesn't mean he does it with everyone else. And even though this is true, there are some more things that I can't believe I missed. Coincidence? I think not. This is the first time we see a Marvin interacting with Cooper directly and helping him out. Now, could this be the same Marvin? Well, it doesn't seem so far-fetched. In the multiplayer intro when Marvin gives a thumbs up, he even says, make my owner proud, thumbs up. Does the high five seem like something Barker would do? Not really. But Cooper? Sounds like something he would do. But how does Marvin's faction fit in all this? How can one single Marvin create a faction out of the blue? It just doesn't make sense. Okay, I agree, but think about it like this. Cooper, who is considered one of the greatest SRS pilots from the Battle of Titan, has disappeared. The only lead the militia has is his Marvin unit that was last seen with him. His Marvin seem very engaged to bring him back, and starting up a searching team of grunts and pilots to find one single pilot would be kind of a waste of resources. So what do they do? They let Marvin be in charge of a scavenger group of mercenaries to find him, and if they encounter any IMC forces, they are ordered to eliminate them. This will give the militia an edge by not wasting valuable resources such as educated commanders to find missing pilots, and will also give them another force to take down what's remaining of the IMC. But wait, why would they assign a Marvin unit for this? Even if he's close to Cooper, why would they send a Marvin? Well, interestingly enough, there's a tweet that can prove that Marvin was the last person who came in contact with Cooper before he disappeared. In a tweet, Marvin says that the last time he saw his owner was at the bar on Harmony. But why is it important that it was on Harmony? In the ending cutscene of the campaign, Cooper narrates a conclusion to the story and the planet is shown in the background. The destruction of Typhon saved the planet Harmony. The militia calls this planet their headquarters. The millions of others call it home. And at the end of the credits, Cooper, Sarah and some grunts fly towards Harmony while it fades to black. Some key things here to remember in the credits is that Cooper's new Vanguard Titan is yet to be completed and he leaves his helmet in the carrier with his new Titan's data core and seer kits. This then means that Cooper have not yet created a neural link with his Titan and therefore the Titan pretty much doesn't know who Cooper is except that he's a pilot. Now, I know a lot of people discuss that a neural link is only made to make movement possible between a Titan and a pilot, but there's more to a neural link than that. In a dialogue option between Cooper and BT before they create their neural link, BT answers that he cannot determine Cooper's intelligence until they created a neural link. So Cooper doesn't have a Titan to track him down. His helmet is left in the ship, and Marvin is the last person we know of that saw Cooper. Doesn't that prove that Marvin is the best candidate to track down Cooper if they've spent so much time at the Beacon and after the Battle of Titan? So with all these points and evidence, wouldn't it be kind of out of place and strange that this would be Barker's Marvin and not Cooper's? As I mentioned in the video a year ago, Respawn has said that they are very careful when adding something in the Titanfall universe. That all this reference as being a pure coincidence just sounds obnoxious to me. Where Cooper is now is unknown, but who knows, maybe Titanfall 3 will give us an answer. And with that said, thanks for watching. Take care.